Let's see. Oh gosh, it's it's almost supper time and I haven't even had lunch yet. Well, I got plenty of beef vegetable soup in the refrigerator. It's gonna last me about the next four weeks if it would last that long. Tomorrow I plan on giving part of it to Jan cause that's how I get rid of it whenever I have too much food. I take it to Jan when she's working at the antique shop. Anyway, let's start off with first things first. Of course, what first things first? I'm going to tell you. Went in the bathroom. Well, I knew I had comb hair. Put on a decent looking shirt and some earring. Because y'all expect to see me dressed that way. And you want me to be matching. See, I got, got both my earrings on. And they match my top. And this is one of those kind of loose, soft, comfy tops. Thank goodness I just happened to have a pair of glasses to match. Who would have expected that? You would, wouldn't you? Okay. I'm combing my hair. Trying to get a little shape to it. And I have one hearing aid in this ear. Hair's covered it. And I go back with the comb and I hit the hearing aid. And it comes out of my ear and I wouldn't have known it if it hadn't whistled and I knew I had hit it. Well, I feel it's not there. I'm looking, where did it go? Where did it go? Now, when it comes to panic, panic mode, any of you wearing hearing aid know exactly what I'm talking about, don't you? You know what it means when you lose a hearing aid. What are you going to do? Well, the first thing you do is take your shoes off because you don't want to take a chance on stepping on the hearing aid. And if you're barefoot, you'll feel it. That I did, no shoes. I'm looking all over the floor. I'm feeling behind me. Could it have gone down my shirt? I didn't have this shirt on at the time. There's not that much room in the bathroom. And I'm on the side away from the toilet, so I know it didn't go in the toilet. If your floor is dark, or fairly dark, it doesn't have to be very dark, carpet, what have you, it's not easy to see a hearing aid. See, they look like this. This is what they look like. Little old thing like that. That falls on the floor. Oh, you can spend hours searching for it. And it's usually right in close proximity. You just can't see it. Well, of course, I was about to panic. I had about a three foot square space below me but I kept feeling, thinking it hooked on something, you know. Maybe, it, I don't know where it went. Checked the comb again to make sure it wasn't hooked on the comb. What am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna <clears throat> tell you. I'm gonna tell you what you do. You people who wear hearing aid, listen closely. Because this is very important to you. I have a little gadget I've had for years. And I'll tell you about it. Here it is. Have you ever seen one of these? It's a magnet. See that right there? Heavy magnet. Ah. Uh, by chance... I knew where that magnet was. 
It was right here. Let me show you. This is where I keep important things. See this? It's got my clippers. It's got my file. It's got my pen. It's got my nail file. It's got my little ruler. It's got my scissors. And it also has my magnet. I keep it in this thing right by my iPad because I never know. I've even got paintbrushes. What do I need with a paintbrush? Got two of them. Well, you just never know when I might want to paint something. Oh, there's all kinds of things in here. Sometimes I forget. Oh, Zacto knife. No, that's not that. Here's the Zacto knife. Yeah. I use Zacto knives all the time. One of these days I may end up having to use it as a weapon because it's the nearest thing I've got to a weapon. So anyhow, this, this is where I keep important things. Right at my fingertips. And that's where I keep my magnet. Now, the nice thing about this is, I'm going to tell you another little story connected to this. I was hanging things in my kitchen wall, on the wall. I had these, this set of graders. They were flat, long, flat graders in their original box. And I wanted to hang all three of them on the wall. Already had the nails up. Two graders I'd already hung up. Reach for the third one. You know, they're about eight inches long and five inches wide. You know what I'm talking about, flat. I hung it on the third nail and it fell off. When it fell off, it fell behind a tall white cabinet that I couldn't move. It went down. I knew it went down all the way to the floor. There was no way I could reach behind that cabinet and get that grater. I couldn't get down under it and get the grater. What did I do? I went to my little container, found my magnet. Now, the nice feature about this is, you know what it's like when you can't get down on your knees, you get too old to, you get down there, you can't get back up? Well, I had that problem a lot. Okay. How was I going to get down behind there to get that grater? This is the nice thing about this magnet. Watch what I'm doing. You see how long that is? It's like a yardstick. Right there's your magnet. I went behind now, use your imagination. I went behind that white cabinet, and I bent it down, and I went down, and went down, and went down, and I heard it connect. I pulled it up back behind that cabinet. I pulled it out. And like this, there was my greater. Pulled it right out. So you see, folks, everybody needs one of these. Everybody. Especially if you wear hearing aids, because they are the hardest things in the world to find. They don't glisten the hearing aids so that if you drop it on the floor, it will glitter and you can see it. No, it's about the dullest looking thing you've got in the house and it blends in with everything so you can't find it. That's where your magnet comes in handy. See, it just pushes right back down in there and I drop it down in my container and it's there, I know exactly where to find it. That's one thing I don't want to lose. So, I took it into the bathroom, 
Now, where do I start? Well, you know, your countertop where your sink is, your little cabinet, at the bottom, it has a little, I don't know what to call it, setback where your toes would go under the cabinet a little bit. I took that magnet, I had it all stretched out, I went down under the very end of that cabinet, right where it touches the wall. I pulled my magnet out and there was my hearing aid. You like that story? Okay. <laughs> okay, that takes care of how to find your hearing aids. Just hope you don't lose them. That's in the first place. Okay, now let's see. What was next? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> first, I have to tell you that years ago, I had a uh, condition, the croup. Yeah, you've heard of the croup. And I'm one of these people that, no, I don't need to go to the doctor. No, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. So, okay. I coughed and I coughed and I coughed. Never did go to the doctor. I got over it, got over it. But there were results. I had damaged my voice box. I could talk. Every now and then I'd be talking and all of a sudden you didn't hear anything. I'm still talking, but you can't hear me. Uh-oh. I did damage. Well, I got okay, except for one thing. I couldn't sing anymore. It damaged my voice box. I could not carry a tune. And I'm serious. I would hear a song on the radio or on TV, and I, I just, I loved to sing. Nobody wanted to hear me, but I liked to sing. And I would sing along with them, and I liked to harmonize. I couldn't harmonize. The tune would not come out. You got everything except the same tune that you were hearing. Now that was like 30 years ago to this day. I cannot carry a tune at all. But the last few days, I've had something in my mind that has me humming to myself. Of course, it's not anything you would understand, but I find myself humming one song, one song. And you'll know what I mean when I go into this. I told you a story about being on the Queen Elizabeth II and about the celebrities that I saw. And one of those celebrities was Frankie Vaughn. And I also told you that he's one of the uh, singers that made popular Green Door. A lot of you know the Green Door. It goes back 50 years. Loved that song. Loved it. He sang Green Door. Now I've told you the story. For the last two weeks, Green Door is in my head and I'm wanting to sing it. But I can't carry the tune. But I got to wondering, you know when you go on YouTube and you want to see what new on YouTube, uh, the cooking shows, the sewing shows, the trip to whatever. And there's one, there's a channel, Green Door. I thought, well, that's strange that I was just telling my viewers about Frankie Vaughn singing Green Door on the Queen Elizabeth II. Isn't it a little odd that that shows up on YouTube? 
Not once, not twice. Oh, three or four, maybe six times. Who knows? How did that happen? Well, I got to thinking about it. I've noticed that before. One day I was telling a story and I mentioned Annette Funicelli. And after I told that story, I started seeing channels Annette Funicelli. Another one, Annette Funicelli. What? How can that be such a coincidence that I talked about something or someone and the next thing you know I'm seeing all this on YouTube. What do you know? Up pops Green Door. They're telling you the, the singers who made the song popular. You can go in and you can see the lyrics. You can go in and you can listen to Green Door. Not thought. That's unusual that I was just talking about Frankie Vaughn and the Green Door. And here it is all over YouTube. Well, finally the brain clicks in and I suddenly realize you know, somebody on YouTube is playing, paying close attention to what you post. It's not because it's me, but I sure am getting a lot of attention through the subject matter. I'm not being mentioned in any way whatsoever, but the subjects I talk about suddenly pop up. One, two, three, four. That's weird. Have you noticed that too? I don't understand it, but it's okay. I mean, it, it, it suits me fine if they pick up on my story. Somebody's watching my story. And right now, they're showing you Green Door. I thought you'd find that interesting. Now, put these things aside. These are just little tidbit things, you know, that I want to point out now and then. And they don't amount to much, but sometimes they do matter. Okay. I went to Corbin with Jan and Charlie. Met my sister Jeanette and her son Ted at my sister Wanda's house. Wanda's 90th birthday. I took the food. One of those dishes was a big bowl of potato salad. Jan says I make the best potato salad. Another dish was baked beans. I don't make baked beans unless we're going on a picnic. And I haven't been on a picnic in about 12 years. All right. I'm telling a story, of course, about visiting my sister on her birthday and what we had to eat and that I took baked beans to my sister's house. Well, it's been years since I made them. Recipe, uh, well, how hard can it be to make baked beans? I remember the time now, I'm going back a long way on this one, when I was young. We had church socials and things, you know, potlucks and, you know, bring a dish. Okay, I'm taking baked beans 
I don't know how to make baked beans. So, I go to the grocery, and instead of buying Campbell's pork and beans or Bush's baked beans, there's this big jar of beans. You can see through the jar. I'll get those. No, I can't tell you what the brand was. So, we're in a hurry to because we're running behind time. I don't have time to prepare these beans. You've got to fix them and then you gotta let them sit in the oven for 30, 45 minutes or an hour. We've got 30 minutes and we gotta be at the church. Well, I dumped those beans in a big uh, Revereware pan, you know, has copper bottom. I dumped them in there and I said, okay, here goes brown sugar. Ketchup, shh, you know, you, you squeeze the bottle now. Used to, you didn't squeeze the bottle, they were glass. And a uh, little onion. I had to hurry, because it was time to go. And I stood there and I stirred those baked beans and onions, and I don't know if I put green pepper in them back then or not, I don't think I did. But of course I did have the bacon. And it took about 15 minutes for me to get them good and hot and where they were bubbling. I said, that's good enough. And I put them in my casserole dish and we took them to the church. Well, and I thought, oh my goodness gracious, these things won't be fit to eat. And the brand of the beans, see the beans, Obviously, look like they'd already been cooked. And I'd never eaten that brand before. So I didn't tell anybody I brought the baked beans. The next day, I was talking to one of the ladies that was at the potluck. And uh, she commented. She said, I, wa I want to know who brought the baked beans? Well, I was kind of hesitant. I thought, I don't, I'm not going to tell her. And I said, why? She said, those were the best baked beans I've ever eaten. I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe. Whip, 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 whip. That was it. So, just how hard is it to make baked beans? They taste a lot just about anywhere you go. So, there I am talking about making potato salad and baked beans for my sister's birthday. And what do you think shows up on YouTube? Baked beans, baked beans, baked beans. The best baked beans you ever ate. The best baked recipe ever. This, you know, there wasn't anything that could be topped. And I thought, wow, well, all of a sudden, am I seeing all these baked bean recipes? And it hit me. I told the story about taking baked beans to my sister's birthday. So the point I'm making here is, better be careful what you talk about. Because you may be watching others topping your recipe. I don't know if YouTube puts it on or if the individual puts it on. So now I, I don't wanna talk about clipping toenails or anything like that because it's just liable to cover YouTube. Everybody will tell you how to clip your fit toenails. I don't want that. They're already asking me how I curl my hair. Well, if you're looking at it today, it ain't curled. But I will tell you this, and I'm going to get some responses on this, I know. 
all years ago, I'd been to England and it was after that, my hair started getting thin. Right on top, you could see my scalp. I didn't know what to do. So for years now, problems with thin hair on top. Well, I've noticed the last few months, my hair looks thicker. You can't see that pink scalp. I haven't teased it. I just combed it back. That's when I lost the hearing aid. If you notice, my hair is thicker. And it's going to get to long enough here in front that I can come bring it down on my forehead sometime soon. So, I'm just pointing out the fact that I've had the thinning hair and now it's getting thicker. Let's see how many uh YouTube stories we get telling you how to make your hair grow thicker. I bet you we do. And I bet you'll notice too. Because I didn't realize how much attention YouTube gives to the input. It, whether it's a recipe whether you're talking about vacation spots, uh, the kind of clothes you wear, and pretty glitchy glasses. Yeah. I've given enough information about the pretty glitchy glasses that I ought to be get, receiving commission for ads. Maybe somebody will notice that now because I love my glasses. I always get compliments on them. In fact, let's see, I've got another pair right here. I love these. Sometimes you need a contrast instead of something that matches. These are a different shape. I like the large lens. And these can be worn with most anything I put on. So when I'm wearing pink, look like there's one missing right there. In fact, there's one missing right there. But the company sent me a little package. I don't know if it's in here or not. I think I put it in here. Little, one of those little yeah, here it is. Let me show you. They sent me this little package. See these little stones? The little pink ones? And there's, let's see, there's a big one in there. It's not supposed to be there. I put it in. And then there's a clear one. These little stones are replacements. So I just get out my super glue and just kind of dot it. That's all I have to do is put a little dot there. And I press one of these little stones right in there. And you can't tell that it's just been repaired. So the glitzy glasses come from different companies. These came from a different company than this one. So if you order from this company, which I can't tell you which company it was, you'll get replacement stones. And the other companies ought to pick up on that too. Because if I lose one in these, you're going to notice it. It's going to show. My red glasses. Where are those red glasses? Let me see if I got them laying around here somewhere. Uh, yeah, they're over here. Oh, I got them all over the house. Oh, these are my gold, my gold one. Well, they're, I don't know what you call them. But anyway, let me show the one. Okay. Let's look at the red ones. Of course, I wore the red ones a lot. 
But you see these little spots like that and that. That's where I carelessly lost the little rhinestone. But now let's move on around. See that right there? Right there. I took red nail polish and dotted it. And unless you look real close, you won't really notice. See, there's a place over here somewhere, a place over here. And I filled in with red nail polish. So people won't really notice how I repair my glitchy glasses. Unless they're turquoise. I don't have any turquoise nail polish. But if I see any somewhere, I'll probably buy it. Now that's a crazy subject to pick up on because really what I was talking about, the overall subject here was baked beans. Who need to know how to bake beans? Simplest thing in the world. Some put some kind of Polish sausages in theirs, and some put ground beef in theirs. But you know, way back, I'm talking 55 years ago, a friend had brought baked bean to another potluck. We were very young then. And I told her these baked beans are the best I've ever eaten. Tell me if you've heard this before. I said, what did you put in them? She said, you know those little cans of potted meat? You know, you buy the little cans of Vienna sausages, Vienna sausages, and then you've got the little cans of potted meat that's what she put in her baked beans. I've never done that, because mainly because I don't ordinarily keep potted meat on hand. Now, I keep a lot of tomato sauce and, and diced tomatoes and cream of chicken soup and mushroom soup. I keep a lot of that stuff in my cabinet all the time. But potted meat is not something I ordinarily would open up the door and see a can of it sitting there. You might see a can of Vienna sausages, but no potted meat. So I'm thinking the next time I prepare baked beans, which may be about three years from now, uh, I might get a can of potted meat and see see how it works. Now, I'm not recommending it to you because I still don't know myself if I'm going to like it. Because, you know, products have changed through the years. The flavors have changed, and sometimes you quit, you could quit buying a product because you don't like it anymore. I don't know what potted meat tastes like today. But I might just get the urge one day to fix some baked beans and I'll add a little potted meat. Of course, you've got to add your onions, you've got to add your green pepper, and you've got to have some bacon. You know, there's nothing any better than the bacon flavor in your vegetables. And of course, whatever else you need. You know, your ketchup and your so one lady today was trying to say the word, and I'm going to give you all the syllables. Worcestershire sauce. But that's not how you pronounce it. In England, now I read this. In England, they just say Worcester sauce. Worcester. I say Worcestershire sauce. I kind of get this 
stir in there before the sure. Worcestershire sauce. That's what I say. And you just have two syllables. You don't end up with four syllables. Just got two. So do it my way, and that makes it easy. Easy for me, anyway. What a subject to be discussing today. I'm going to check and see what Billy Jean is cooking. I saw where his uh, fried turkey fell apart. I don't know if he came back and repaired it or not, but sure was looking good because I've never fried turkey in my life. Never even thought to fry a turkey. I thought all you did with the turkey was put that great big thing in that big pot of oil and let it cook. Because I really prefer chicken. Mama taught me that. She didn't like turkey either. But I think after watching him frying his turkey, I may change my mind. So I'm going to have to go back and watch his fried turkey show and see if he got to finish it. So you watch it too, because you can learn a lot from this man. Okay. I'm going to close out for the day. Got my chocolate. Let's get the words right. Got my Dr. Pepper in my little thermos. Carry my thermos with me everywhere I go. Comes in kind of handy too, cause it keeps your Dr. Pepper good and cold. There's so much I need to do here. And I was going to consider doing another table display. Not really a display, but information about my Fiesta wear. I still see a lot of, of uh, videos talking about the old and the new Fiesta wear. And I'm a firm, firm collector of the original Fiesta wear. I never started collecting that that was made from 1987 till today. I didn't want to mix it with my old Fiesta wear, which dates back for me to 1954. I'm not going to tell you how many years ago that was. You can figure it out. Um, uh, yeah because I started reading a little more about my own Fiesta wear. Now I've got a big old, it's called a fruit bowl, big flat fruit bowl in the off-white. Off-white was one of the first five colors. I didn't even notice it was Fiesta wear. Do you know what? That's a rare piece of Fiesta sitting on my cabinet over here. Great big fruit bowl. Nothing special about it as far as looks is concerned. Money-wise, it's special, but it's not going anywhere unless I drop it in the floor. So anyway, one of these days, when I can get it all together, and I have to refresh my memory about the details on various pieces of Fiesta Ware. I have learned that it keeps going up in value. Well, that's wonderful, but it's not going to help me any because by the time someone gets paid for that Fiesta Ware, I'm going to be underground. That's okay. I'm enjoying it. It was my first set of dishes when I got married, 1954. 
and I've still got them. And they're in my little white cabinet way back here somewhere behind this flower pot. You've seen them. So I want to get them out again, and I want to go piece by piece, giving you the details, telling you how you can recognize the old from the new. Partly because it upsets me to see dealers in antique shop putting a high price on the Fiesta Ware made after 1987. Same high price they would put on the original Fiesta Ware, which is worth twice as much. So be sure you check out your Fiesta Ware when you're buying it. Make sure you're not paying the original price for the new Fiesta wear. I hate to see people taken that way. And in most cases, dealers know the difference. My word of advice, you have a good day and I'm going to the kitchen and I am fixing me a bowl of beef vegetable soup, pot that big. I've got my coleslaw, have my own way of making my coleslaw, and it is so simple and so easy that people won't even consider it because, oh, that's too easy, but it's good. I also have my cornbread. Yeah, I've got a little eight inch skillet, eight inch skillet, about like this. I've had that skillet at least 45 years. Looks as good as new. But I don't need skillets larger than that because nobody's helping me eat it. But when I fix cornbread in my little eight inch skillet, I can cut it into three or four sections and I can get three or four meals off of my cornbread. All I do is take what I'm going to eat, put it in the oven, reheat it. Don't put it in the microwave, put it in the oven because you want that crust to stay crispy. Now, how many subjects have I covered today? Well, enough to hold me for a few days and I'll see if I can't come up with another good story. Let's go back to the turquoise well, let's see what these look like. Kind of nice, aren't they? Hmm. See, as long as I wear my pretty glasses, you won't be looking at me. So here we are. Okay, folks. I'm getting hungry. I'm going to also check and see what Billie Jean's fixing. Yeah. I kind of like the way he cooks. And I'm glad you're supporting him. And let him know how much you enjoy his program. Thank you very much.